We all know that SpongeBob is a kitchen sponge living in a pineapple under the sea, having an occupation of fry cooking at the Krusty Krabs for a crustaceous cheapskate, and well known for his obsession with jellyfishing. But there are some secrets that SpongeBob has kept at the back of his brain and locked away from the public. Like, who was SpongeBob before episode 1? What's his connection with Mr. Krabs in his earlier days? These are questions that never came across the mind of SpongeBob fans. Get ready for the Sponge Nam Theory. Despite everyone having the opinion of Spongebob being an average Joe like you and I, he might have actually been part of a war that took place in Bikini Bottom a long time ago. But before we talk about this war, there are a handful of questions and concerns that should be addressed. What makes Spongebob similar to a military troop? Soldiers are famous for having a strict schedule where they are required to wake up at a particular time, have a morning routine, a fitness session, and sleep at a designated time. If you really think about it, I'm practically describing the life of Spongebob. You see, he consistently gets up at either 6 or 7 o'clock on the dot giving him time to get ready for work. He adds a strict physical exercise session in the morning, incorporates nightly motivational exercises right after work. I think I'll skip my nightly motivational exercises and go straight to bed. And finally goes to sleep at 9 p.m. Speaking of sleeping and waking up, have you ever noticed Spongebob has one of the most unusual alarm clocks in the whole bikini bottom? Unlike Spongebob, other fish have your standard beeping alarm clock. This could indicate Spongebob can cannot wake up to any other alarm clock. He literally mentioned that in a previous episode called Broken Alarm. My old foghorn clock was the only alarm clock that could wake me up. Sure hope one of these works. But the real question is why can't he wake up to any other alarm clock? What's so special about his foghorn? Why is it the only thing that can wake him up? The foghorn is meant to be as loud as heavy artillery to stimulate a fight or flight response. This response is what allows soldiers to prepare for enemies. Not just that, but many veterans that suffer from PTSD have problems in their circadian rhythm which prevents them from feeling sleepy at bedtime and being active in the daytime. The most effective way to wake up soldiers and veterans is the military buggle wake up call. This is also used to improve their assembling speed. Although the foghorn sounds different from the Reve, it seems to have a similar effect on Spongebob's day as it prepares Spongebob to start his morning routine. Here's something interesting. In many episodes, we see Spongebob marching down the streets saying, I'm ready, on his way to work. I'm ready! I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. It's a running gag that the TV show enjoys using. Spongebob is saying this out of fear of getting eliminated in the army. Many soldiers are punished if not prepared for war or fail to comprehend military policies. Now obviously Spongebob is not currently in the military but it looks like a symptom of PTSD. Spongebob has probably gone through so much trauma that he must inform everyone in the world that he is disciplined. We first see the I'm ready phase and formal marching in season 1 episode 1, Help Wanted. A classic episode showcasing Spongebob applying for a position at the Krusty Krab. This episode seems to highlight everything that proves Spongebob as a war veteran, almost as if the showrunners wanted to indirectly set this as a first impression of Spongebob. Something else soldiers are strictly required to have is their name tag on their uniform at all times. Spongebob shows a similar attitude towards a name tag at work. This can be seen in Season 3 Episode 18, Missing Identity, which opens with Spongebob taking a trip down memory lane about losing his name tag. In the flashback, a customer points out his missing name tag and Spongebob freaks out throwing a tantrum over nothing. Well, you really should be wearing a name tag. I am in fact wearing a name tag. Huh? After his weird flashback, he finds out the barista is wearing the wrong name tag, which causes great confusion. Thanks, uh, Betty. Sweetie, I'm not Betty. I just borrowed her uniform while mine's at the cleaners. Why on earth would SpongeBob care about this that much? Well, he is austere. Too austere that if something is not in order, he suffers a panic attack as a side effect of PTSD. Similar to a woman with OCD entering a messy room. When folks join the military, they are always expected to follow a strict rule where if they disobey, the consequences get really ugly. SpongeBob has been through enough trauma that even a little bit of disorder would destroy his confidence. 
And watch this. When we take a detailed look at SpongeBob's name tag, it doesn't really look like a fast food name tag where you usually find the establishment logo, but just his name over an anchor. But if you look at a troop's name tag, you hardly see anything but the name. His name tag definitely has a connection to his old veteran days. But what really astonished me was the fact that Mr. Krabs said this. There's gonna be a surprise uniform inspection in one hour. Surprise uniform inspection. Anyone who doesn't pass, gets the boot anyone who doesn't get the holy crap this motherfucker is threatening spongebob and squidward spongebob finally finds the name tag and towards the end of the episode we see solid proof that spongebob is treated like a soldier but we will come back to that in a little bit remember the joyful moments when spongebob sings such beautiful songs of course you do spongebob singing is always excessive but want to know something dark his songs sound awfully similar to how military soldiers sing while marching fighting or playing journeys and if you have been paying attention to the episode pizza delivery you can see spongebob singing while making the delivery the crusty crab pizza is the pizza for you and me This is something the military practices when they prepare for war. And the episode Band Geeks depicts this very well. If you missed out on the episode, what are you doing? Anyways, it's an episode about Spongebob organizing Bikini Bottom to perform Sweet Victory at the Super Bowl. The lyrics that Spongebob sings is about being a winner, and you can already imagine he is talking about his military life. Spongebob also chooses to wear the exact same clothes in every episode similar to military troops in boot camp. Now I know what you're thinking, doesn't everyone in Bikini Bottom wear the exact same clothes every time and it may be true but what makes spongebob's clothes unique is that they are super formal from the tie to the suit to the freaking dress shoes while there might be a once in a blue moon exception he usually prefers to wear this at every location from fry cooking to jelly fishing he's even seen wearing his uniform in bed in some episodes sweet dreams gary why exactly is this the case? Many veterans are seen wearing their uniform in honor of the dead soldiers and people who served before them. And this is exactly why Spongebob could be wearing it most of the time. I suspect Spongebob has lost a friend at war resulting in PTSD and the only way to cope is to show respect through his uniform. But maybe I'm stretching this theory a bit too much. Nope, no 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 no. There is somebody Spongebob talks about quite rarely and that character is long dead. His way to cope with this tragic death is to preserve his friend's life in a bottle of soap and water. I'm talking about Bubble Buddy. In season 2 episode 3 we first meet Bubble Buddy when Spongebob felt lonely and needed someone to hang out with. He thought of creating a new friend. Now I know what you're saying. If Bubble Buddy was one of his old friends, then what explains the fact that Spongebob literally just made him? And you might have a point, but I'm gonna contradict that real quick. If Bubble Buddy really was a new friend, how did Spongebob know so much about him? I mean, it's not like we saw them communicate throughout most of the episode. Spongebob seems to have a mental blueprint of all of Bubble Buddy's preferences, like knowing he is lactose intolerant. Bubble Buddy's lactose intolerant, he can't eat cheese. Loves bendy straws. Bubble Buddy likes bendy straws. And his exact patty order. He doesn't like the crust. The ketchup should be under the patty. The pickles should be on the left side. Spongebob knows Bubble Buddy more than a mother would of her son. This is a little too much information Spongebob learned in just one episode. I believe Bubble Buddy was an old friend of Spongebob's that died during the war and the only way for Spongebob to cope is to use his imagination to preserve the memory of his late friend. No matter how much people try to convince Spongebob of Bubble Buddy not existing, he refuses to accept it. Some veterans act in a similar way when they fall into PTSD and are unable to control their emotions. No matter what Bikini Bottom says about Bubble Buddy, he was indeed a real fish at one point and died a hero. Rest in peace. When we take a look at Krusty Krab episodes, we see a strong bond between Spongebob and Mr. Krabs, almost like a father-son bond. This kitchen's not the same without you. Is it possible that these two had a connection way before the first episode of the TV show? The episode Help Wanted clearly illustrates that Spongebob and Mr. Krabs had a history together in the war and I have evidence to support this claim. Take a look at how Spongebob greets Mr. Krabs for the first time. Permission to come aboard, Captain! Captain! What? You can't say I'm making this up. Spongebob also seems to take orders from Mr. Krabs no matter how ridiculous they get. Join me, boy, or you're fired. Now go get me some jellyfish. And remember, the wildest story ever. 
and he somehow managed to get the hydrodynamic spatula, which seemed like something Squidward and Mr. Krabs made up right on the spot. Did someone order a spatula? That's right, one hydrodynamic spatula with port and starboard attachments, and let's not forget the turbo drive. I believe SpongeBob was trained in boot camp to follow all orders from the authoritative figure or there would be dire consequences. So much so that in season 4 episode 9, SpongeBob was compliant enough to turn a bunch of car parts into a rocket just to impress Sergeant Roderick. He is so well trained that he has developed a verbal tick, almost like a reflex when answering questions from the captain. Go out and fetch me a uh, uh, hydrodynamic spatula. Hi! Hi, Captain! One hydrodynamic spatula coming right up, sir! Fear of a Krabby Patty was an episode about SpongeBob going through intense mental conditions after a non-stop shift at the Krusty Krab. SpongeBob later went through hallucinations and tics similar to how soldiers suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. One of the symptoms are depicted in a scene in episode 1, where he says, I'm ready constantly. I'm ready! <laughs> This could be the PTSD symptoms of something that occurred in the war. It is theorized that Spongebob was not ready during the war which led to tragedy, and possibly got him kicked out of the army. So Spongebob constantly uses this line to inform everyone this time he is actually ready. The trauma was so deep that he still reflects to his previous days. Just take a look at this scene and tell me what you think. I want to live! I want to live! We see Spongebob screaming for his life. This is when his delusion occurs. He mistakes the customers for enemies and begs, I want to live. He also has a tendency of being very polite to everybody in Bikini Bottom, addressing them as sir or ma'am. There you are, sir! Hey, do you sell food here? Yes, sir! And he especially cares about the elderly. Old people are the greatest! They're full of wisdom and experience! Soldiers are taught all this in boot camp. You can't tell me this is far-fetched. Have you guys ever noticed Spongebob and Mr. Krabs' relationship? It is almost as strong as a father and son bond. Just by the way they talk to each other gives us an idea of the level of proximity between this pair. Mr. Krabs always calls Spongebob boy, lad, or even son. Just stand aside, lad. Oh, you're fine, me boy! Spongebob addresses Eugene with phrases and words such as aye aye captain, ahoy, and sir almost as if Mr. Krabs is a sergeant. And there is a lot of evidence that Mr. Krabs took part in the military. I mean at this point it's a dead giveaway that Mr. Krabs served the navy as Armorab Krabs as depicted in season 4 episode 1, Shell of a Man, where Mr. Krabs was awarded a manly toughness trophy. And all his navy buddies are aware of Mr. Krabs' position. In this episode Spongebob is just minding his own business and all of a sudden Mr. Krabs takes him to his hidey hole where they dig up his navy chest. Mr. Krabs reveals his old treasures from his past to Spongebob which doesn't sound right. Why on earth would he tell all his secrets to a kid? I mean Mr. Krabs is a very intellectual creature loaded with knowledge so it seems a bit stupid that he would be comfortable to share his secrets. Unless Spongebob was supposed to know all of this. In the entire Bikini Bottom, Mr. Krabs only showed Spongebob and refused to reveal these treasures to anybody else. You may rationalize that Spongebob is trusted because he's been working at the Krusty Krab for a long time and that's cool and all but that's bullshit. Squidward who has been working much longer than Spongebob wasn't shown the treasures. This is what you call trust. Mr. Krabs places all his trust in Spongebob. If you don't know already, trust plays a very important role in the military keeping everyone united united like family. This is exactly what Spongebob and Mr. Krabs had in the military. In one of the later episodes, Krabs revealed that he worked as a chief janitor on the SS Gourmet and head chef on the SS Diarrhea. I thought you said you were the head chef on the SS Gourmet! Did I say that? I clean the bathrooms on the Gourmet! I was the head chef on the SS Diarrhea! This just shows that Mr. Krabs had a connection in the military at some point. Apparently one of Spongebob's other friends was in the military. Mr. Krabs revealed that Patrick was a captain at one point during the war but he doesn't seem like the type considering his low level of intelligence. I strongly believe that Mr. Krabs took Patrick's position after he left the navy and right after hired Spongebob. In season 3 episode 10 the Krusty Krab training video, the narrator explained that Mr. Krabs fell into an endless deep depression after the war. After the war, Krabs stayed secluded in a deep depression 
that seemed endless. Not only does this show that Mr. Krabs was a Navy captain, but also illustrates how he coped with his depression. Listen to this. Then his luck changed when he acquired a bankrupt retirement home. The Krusty Krab was born. His luck changed after establishing the Krusty Krab. According to this episode, the Krusty Krab saved Mr. Krabs from this endless depression, and I'm positive this brought improvements into SpongeBob's life by soothing his mental disorders from the war. No matter how low he gets paid by Mr. Krabs, and how much verbal abuse is taken, he still prefers to work there suggesting that this is the one thing that keeps Spongebob going. You could argue that he just has a passion for fry cooking, but I believe the real reason is his loyalty for the strict and disciplined environment at the Krusty Krab. The Krusty Krab is unique for its military style of operating. I mean, they get yelled at constantly. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Squidward? Arr, Spongebob, get out here! Required to wear name tags at all times and keep everything organized. Spongebob is a natural perfectionist and feels comfortable in this environment as if he was once part of the Navy. And have you ever noticed something about the way Mr. Krabs and Spongebob dress? I mean, characters in the episode have no specific style of dressing. They pretty much wear everything they can find. Patrick wears shorts, Squidward wears a shirt, and Plankton, well, he wears nothing. But the point is that these two men are one of the only people to wear formal attire. I mean, we do see people throughout Bikini Bottom wearing suits and boots, but it probably matches their job description. SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs are laid back and don't really need to dress like professionals. How many times do you walk into your local fast food restaurant and see employees wearing formal clothes? Chances are, never. I can guarantee these two have some connection in the war, which is why they prefer to dress like this. I'm sure 90% of Spongebob fans can agree that Spongebob is kind-hearted and compassionate towards people in society. Ever since I rewatched all the previous Spongebob episodes, I knew I was wrong. Spongebob is capable of murder, and if I were to count the murders Spongebob committed, I'd run out of fingers. Remember my mass murderer theory? In that theory, I did my best to prove Spongebob being a mass murderer. It's really good, and you should check it out, but basically season 1 episode 8, Sandy's rocket proves Spongebob's war days. Spongebob asked Sandy if he could accompany her to her space mission and she said this. No way, SpongeBob, especially after your little mishap with my whirly bird. Especially after your little mishap with my whirly bird. This scene displays a lot behind SpongeBob's past. We see a field full of tombstones. SpongeBob killed hundreds of people in Sandy's helicopter. I took a really deep search in this scene and it all made sense to me. So the helicopter that SpongeBob flew was called the Whirly Bird and you know what? Bird is a military slang for helicopter. I'm telling you, these writers don't do stuff like this for no reason. So we all know SpongeBob killed many people in the helicopter accident, but after watching the entire episode, there is still more evidence supporting my claim. So after SpongeBob and Patrick thought they landed on the moon, they started alien hunting and what what really made me question the show was when Spongebob was capable of capturing the entire Bikini Bottom without any emotions. In many episodes, Spongebob is well known for his weak emotions preventing him from dissatisfying people despite being used by everyone. But in Sandy's Rocket, there were no signs of emotion or guilt suggesting that when Spongebob was in the war, he was trained to remove all emotions just like soldiers out on war. The most common mental disorder corresponding to Spongebob's behavior is bipolar disorder which could explain Spongebob Spongebob's shift in behavior at a given moment. A lot of critics could still argue saying Spongebob doesn't have any combat skills and I expect that myself but there are many instances in the TV show displaying solid proof of Spongebob's skills in violence. For example, I'm sure if you've been watching Spongebob for a while, you probably have an idea that Spongebob engages in karate very often. Despite Spongebob losing to Sandy most of the times, it shouldn't be overlooked that Spongebob's karate skills are impressive and better than the average bikini bottom citizen. The episode Karate Choppers demonstrates Spongebob's passion for karate. He basically falls in love with the sport to the point where he destroys the Krusty Krab. But his obsession was so strong that he got fired. This could tell us that Spongebob must have trained during his army days and can't part with the hustle that kept him alive. Not only is Spongebob good at karate, but he proved himself worthy by his capability of using various military equipment such as field telephones, turrets, and rifles. That's not all. I just realized if you take a close look at Spongebob's band outfit, you can see it's all red with yellow stars. Don't make me say it. 
SpongeBob could have possibly fought for China during the war, but let's ignore that fact and save it for another time. This last piece of evidence will blow your mind and it's from Ben Geeks at the halftime Super Bowl. We see Squidward and his band performing and when I dissected the lyrics of the song, I noticed something quite unusual. It's the It's the thrill of one more kill. This single line complements all my previous points. SpongeBob has definitely killed someone in the past to know how satisfying it is to kill someone. Some military soldiers experience intense pleasure out in the fields after killing an opponent. It's also a bit surprising the writers would approve these lyrics for a kid's show. A question I'm still trying to figure out, where on earth did SpongeBob learn this? Still don't believe me? Hang on tight. So far we gathered up quite a lot of evidence supporting the fact that Spongebob is a war veteran. But the only thing missing is his past. If only we had solid proof that Spongebob attended military school as a child. Wait a minute. In 2021, Nickelodeon created a spin-off show called Camp Coral about a younger version of Spongebob and his friends exploring the world during summer camp. I believe this whole spin-off was created for the sole purpose of a secret military camp. There are many clues around the show supporting this like this picture. It seems like a poster tracking the campers resilience. Many schools preach resilience to a certain degree but to track it is another level. Soldiers in the field are required to keep fighting until they get down. There are many things that support the fact of Camp Coral being a military camp. In season 1 episode 1 we see Squidward playing the military reveille in the morning. Should have told that annoying kid to play Reveille in the morning. In the same episode, we also see Larry the Lobster running a fitness class for the children. That's nice. Wait a second! Look at Larry's outfit! This outfit has striking similarities to that of a navy sailor outfit, with the sailor tie and white suit. What the hell? Also take a look at Spongebob's room. We see a poster full of rules that are required at this summer camp. And these are fairly simple rules such as not disturbing junior counselor, washing behind the fins, no sailor mouth, you know, simple rules. But the real question is, why is this summer camp so strict? I mean, it's a time when kids are out of school and need a break from long division and reading books. I believe SpongeBob's parents are behind this. You see, SpongeBob isn't really the sharpest tool in the shed. We constantly see him causing trouble and chaos at the camp. He seems to have a form of ADHD. Margaret and Harry must have sent him off to the military to discipline him. This explains why SpongeBob seems to show many improvements in his discipline as an adult. Did you also notice SpongeBob sleeping on a bunk bed? This is also something we see in barracks. And wait. Well, 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 look who we have here. It's Mr. Krabs. What did I tell you earlier? Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob have a history together. Mr. Krabs is a proprietor of the camp. He doesn't seem like having a major role in SpongeBob's development, but I believe he is secretly running this camp in a way that would turn this kid into a man. This is showcased at the end of episode 1 where he hands out saving a counselor from a monster badge to SpongeBob. What you do get is a saving a counselor from a monster badge. He was secretly trained to become a soldier and fight for Bikini Bottom through reinforcement. <laughs> The Krusty Krab has always been the pinnacle of all restaurants in Bikini Bottom. Mr. Krabs runs the establishment and seems to have an extreme amount of control towards his employees. Almost like the military. I just talked about the episode Missing Identity and how it resembles to how the military operates. Mr. Krabs informs the employees that there is a surprise uniform inspection. Both Spongebob and Squidward line up against the wall where Mr. Krabs stares the both of them down to make sure everything is in order. And I mean everything. He makes ridiculous requests such as telling Squidward to shave the hair on his nose. Hmm. Promise me you'll shave tonight and you pass. Notice SpongeBob's position of at attention with his perfect posture, straight knees, and palms facing inwards, unlike Squidward who is slouching, bending his knees, and positioning his palms incorrectly. This is a style troops are supposed to use to show respect to their leader. For further proof, in the Sponge Out of Water movie, Patrick revealed that working for Mr. Krabs means that you have to go to war whenever something goes wrong, and if you don't comply, he will fire you. Oh, I just remembered, I don't work for Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs is looking for a loyal employee that would ride or die in the name of Team Krabs. He has probably mentioned this to Spongebob before he got the job. 
Looks like we're done. Well, not quite. We still need to go over the secret formula. The Krabby Patty secret formula is the biggest conspiracy since season 1 episode 1. Mr. Krabs has been gatekeeping the formula ever since it came into existence. One of the biggest questions by far about the TV show is, what on earth is the Krabby Patty made of? There have been several attempts of Plankton trying to get his hands on the formula and every single scheme failed. I believe the Krabby Patty secret formula is not the Krabby Patty secret formula. Okay, you're probably confused right now, but let me explain. The secret formula Mr. Krabs is protecting is disguised as the recipe of the Krabby Patty. Is it possible that the Krabby Patty secret formula is actually a metaphor for secret war plans? In season 1 episode 1, Friend or Foe, we were shown the Krabby Patty secret formula for a very brief time. I'm taking the recipe and fixing it! No way! That recipe's mine! But we didn't see enough information to make any conclusions. However, in Krabby Road, we were explicitly shown the Krabby Patty secret formula. The words on the list were kind of odd. It wasn't English or any other language. This is what I theorize. The words on the formula are ciphers that are used for extra protection to keep the secret, well, a secret. After World War I, soldiers increased the use of military grade encryption to protect information from getting leaked. But these secrets were more critical. Not some burger recipe, but more like the dates of attacks and what weapons and vehicles were gonna be used. We know Plankton is the only person in Bikini Bottom to have an eye on the formula. Is it possible that Mr. Krabs and Plankton are in war with each other? This could make sense because we know that Plankton's real intentions are to rule the world, not have some Krabby Patty business. The New Leaf, another episode revolving around Plankton. It was just an ordinary episode of Plankton attempting to steal the formula, but I noticed something quite unusual at the very beginning of the episode. Plankton was waving a peace offering flag to Mr. Krabs. At first I thought it was just a thing enemies do to make peace, but this sounds awfully unnecessary to wave at a business rival. He was waving the peace offering almost as if he wanted to end a war. And keep in mind that this is very similar to how countries of the world use a treaty to make peace. Maybe there is something in the secret formula that could turn Plankton into a giant, kind of like the super soldier serum from Marvel Comics that were hidden from the Nazis. In season 4 episode 12, Plankton wished for one thing and one thing only, to become a giant. My wish, nay my command is to be taller. Going as far as season 1 episode 15 sleepy time, we see Plankton dreaming to become taller. And if you think about it, the formula must have something to do with improving Plankton so that he could rule the world. When we look at Plankton's wishes and dreams, none of them relate to the Krabby Patty. He is well known as the shortest character in the sea, so it would make sense if Plankton is sick of his short stature. Plankton is the smartest creature in Bikini Bottom. We have seen his incredible inventions in the past, so it would seem like a piece of cake to construct a burger recipe better than the Krabby Patty. Height is something that is determined by genetics. No amount of money can increase your natural size. So Plankton is likely attempting to steal this recipe to become large enough to destroy his enemies such as Mr. Krabs. It seems to me that Mr. Krabs and Spongebob illegally cooked the serum and disguised it to prevent anyone from suspecting the truth. But if this is really true, wouldn't Mr. Krabs shit his pants if some authority would get to the formula? Gee willikers. I just realized there is an episode that could explain this very well. The Nasty Patty. So in this episode, the health inspector arrives to perform a food inspection. Mr. Krabs freaks out over this news. But if the Krabby Patty is the best food in Bikini Bottom enjoyed by hundreds of fish, why on earth would Mr. Krabs go through a severe mental breakdown? Many of you would say because of the hygiene and unsafe work environment. But do you really expect the Krusty Krab to be musty and risky when you have a guy like Spongebob keeping the area spotless? That's what I thought. It's safe to say Mr. Krabs is really worried about the secret formula from being released which could reveal all the military plans and serums. Now we know that Spongebob had a history in the army where he was separated by his parents, witnessed a friend die, and even murdered many fish in the sea. But shouldn't Spongebob's PTSD affect him to the point where he falls into sadness and depression? And wouldn't Spongebob's low IQ affect his current life after the tragedy faced during the war? Well, not quite. I believe Spongebob is trying his best to avoid his old life as best as possible and start a new life in Bikini Bottom. If you watch the movie Forrest Gump, you can see the similarities right off the bat. They both have low IQs and how friendly they are with everyone. Spongebob shows love and compassion to all citizens of Bikini Bottom as a way to stay far away from his old life as possible. Maybe Spongebob is secretly sad and practices stoicism to make others happier. Many veterans also include physical exercise to keep the body active and creating social 
social bonds to keep the mind healthy. This could help Spongebob manage his emotions and forget about the losses in his days in the military. Although there is no clear cut information of his struggles in the past, we all know Mr. Squarepants served his country. And that is the Sponge Nam theory. Thanks for watching.